So we ended up having a great question from one of our subscribers, user one. If I have 20 lights, I need 20 balances. I can plug them into a power bar and directly into the wall. Wouldn't that short the circuit? He asked a couple different questions here. First off, do you need 20 balances to run 20 lights? No, you do not need 20 balances to run 20 lights. Hey everyone, you're here with Mark Bowell at perfectgardens.com. So today we're gonna to be talking about your grow room central nervous system. I am talking about the electricity specifically, not the controllers that control your environment. I'm talking about your sub panel box, your relay systems, your brains for your balances, the things that are going to be basically turning on and off the power for all your other components and things like that. I will also be talking about safety and I'm also going to be talking about how to expand your growing capacity without spending more than a few hundred more dollars. So let's go ahead and move on and talk about the first thing, disclaimer. Okay, guys, we are dealing with electricity. And if you do not know what you're doing, please go find someone else. There is a really great saying that I always go by, focus on your strengths, hire on your weaknesses. And just to kind of explain the consequences a little bit more, if you go in there and you end up wiring something or jumping your electricity and something does go wrong and a fire gets started and, and someone gets hurt, that is manslaughter. That is jail time. That's a criminal act. So once again, guys, we are not dealing with a criminal illegal substance anymore. We're dealing with permitting issues, licensing issues, stuff like that. So you're going to be fined and you're dealing really with a civil civil crime now, not a criminal crime, obviously dependent upon your state. Although what can make it a criminal crime is negligence. So once again, if you don't know what you're doing with electricity, make sure to find someone that is trustworthy and reliable. And then over time, teach them how to work around the plants. Because I give you my word, if you start being successful, you're going to keep expanding your operation and electricity is going to be something that's going to constantly worked on and adjust. So here are just a few pictures of one of our operations. I personally have set up over 150 grow light operations ranging all the way from one light all the way up to 500 plus lights throughout California and I have assisted people throughout the United States through designs and helping set up their facilities. So some of the recommendations that I am going to be talking about today and everything on the flow of electricity has been fixed figure it out through the life of hard knocks. I remember the first time when I was working with my father, right when I got out of the military, we set up our own hydroponic store and within months, my father was no longer interested in the retail side and all he wanted to do was grow pot because he always tells me that cannabis has been his oldest and most reliable friend throughout his entire life. I remember us starting our first operation, a person that knew us for 10, 20 years came into the the grow shop, he was like, hey, I have a facility. The housing market has tanked me. I need to start growing pot and to keep my house and keep us afloat. Do you want to partner up? And my father was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. Obviously, we've known each other for such a long time. And we, like so many other people, start throwing up 10, 20 light. And right off the bat, I start telling my dad, dad, we can't be running extension cords. We can't just be throwing up lights. There has to be a a better way. And I remember that being late 2009, maybe early 2010. And now we are in 2020. From there, we went literally from 10 lights to 400 lights and literally less than a year and a half just because of our pre-existing awareness of construction and our network of people that we were able to call upon when we realized, hey, we shouldn't be using extension cords. There has to be a better way and obviously we ended up calling in our electrician then i ended up working with my electrician our total for a course of the last 10 years customizing all of this stuff from sub panel boxes relay systems delay timers making sure we weren't shorting out the transformers literally coming out the poles from the street. So let's go ahead and get into the first few steps of a traditional setup in your grow room. 
First, you're going to have your sub-panel at your location. And this is very standard. It doesn't matter every location from a house to a commercial facility. Everyone's going to have something like this. And if you're growing larger than 100 lights, you're probably going to have like a mini transformer in your location. And the first step is going to be your sub-panel box at your location. And there might be other steps. If you're doing gorilla growing or going off of a generator, just consider this to be your generator. I'm just going to be using it as a pg e basically. So you come off, your house has a sub-panel box, and then let's say you are growing with 16 lights or less. This is the route I would recommend you do. Go get something that's going to be pre-built that this industry is already creating, and that's reliable. This is going to help you on safety, and it's going to help you on really a, just a plug-and-play, because this little thing right here, if you customize it, could be a few thousand. So as you can see here, your first step is your sub-panel at your location right here. Your second step is you're going to want to set up a dedicated sub-panel for your grow. And it doesn't matter if you have a two-light system or if you're dedicating your entire house to your grow, you're still going to want to set up a dedicated sub-panel for your grow. That's going to be coming off of your main panel that's coming into your house. So you can see right here, these are the breakers. So breaker one goes to bank one, breaker two goes to bank two, breaker three goes to bank four, a three, and so so on four four same over here that you're going to have your dedicated sub panel box obviously if you're making a custom situation and you're growing larger than 16 lights your sub panel box is going to be larger than this just to be clear this is a pretty small sub panel box from this sub panel box is going to go to a relay system right here that's going to be sending and separating out the power same thing over here this is your relay system so these sub panel boxes separate the power going to these separate banks. Same thing here, said panel box goes to these separate relay systems. If you are growing larger than 16 lights, what I would recommend is putting in a delay timer so all of your lights don't come on all at once. These come on and then 30 seconds later, the next bank of lights come on, then 30 seconds later, the next bank and so on and so on. That's going to help uh, put less load on the line and you do not want a transformer to blow out with PG&E. Your location is busted at that point, and you have a one hundred to two hundred thousand dollar bill from PG&E, and potentially might have some other type of civil or criminal fines. Next, after this, you're going to need a timer. Once again, if you're getting a pre-built uh, system, I would recommend the one from DL Wholesale. You can get it at PerfectGardens.com. They have a timer right here that's going to be able to control your growing facility. So twelve on, twelve off. 18 on, 6 off. Same thing over here. You're going to have a timer that's going to be turning on these relays. Your timer is going to be different than your delay timers. So just to be clear, this timer will be sending power to your separate delay timers, which your delay relay timers will be then sending power to your relay systems, which will then be turning on your ballast. So this is a traditional way of setting up your central nervous system in your grow room. Now I'm going to show you how to double your capacity without it costing too much money and without you compromising your safety. So once again, you have your main power, whether it's a generator or whether it is a the power coming in from your house. And once again, everything I'm saying, once you listen to it, go back, listen to it two or three more times and begin to expand your creativity. It doesn't have to be inside a facility. If you're out there in a large location, you have greenhouses or whatever, you can do this same type of setup and just be creative of whatever you're doing. Just understand these are the basic flow for your central nervous system. So once again, your first step is your sub panel box at your location. Then you're going to have a dedicated sub panel for your grow. Then you're going to come over here and you're going to turn on your relay system. So the one I showed you before was a relay system with timers. That's a 16 light setup. You're not going to want to use a system with timers because you're going to need more control over that when you're using this technique. So just be aware, you can still get a pre-built system. Okay, so this dedicated sub panel is for your grow, and then it's going to be sending over to your relay system, which is going to separate out your power once again. And you can get a pre-built, whether you're doing a four light, an eight light, or a 16 light. 
anything past 16 lights, you're going to need to customize it. Then what you can do is you can use these things called the flip. And what it does is this flip is phenomenal because this flip will run eight balances, but it, this flip will turn your eight balances into 16 lights. And how is it going to do that? Basically, what's going to happen is these balances are going to stay on all the time. And it's going to be sending power over to the back of this ballast, which all of your hoods are going to be plugged into this flip box, which will automatically flip controlled by a timer. So what happens is this box will be plugged into a timer. And when the timer flips on 12 on and 12 off, it's going to be flipping this power box. So what's going to happen is it will send power to this line and then it will send power to this line. So how is this going to make you more money? Well, you have room one right here and you have room two. You Obviously, you're still going to need a bedroom that's going to house your clones and your mothers and is going to end up supporting this flower room. But what's going to happen is this little bedroom is going to end up providing all the clones for flower room A. And when this one's on this one's off and then when this one's on this one's off and so now you have two flower rooms and so now you're harvesting twice as much so we end up having a great question from one of our subscribers user one if i have 20 lights i need 20 balances i can plug them into a power bar and directly into the wall wouldn't that short the circuit so he asked a couple different questions here. First off, do you need 20 balances to run 20 lights? No, you do not need 20 balances to run 20 lights. Using this type of a setup, using a flip switch scenario, you only need 10 balances and 10 balances will actually end up running two separate rooms. So you can save thousands and thousands of dollars. Next, what you're going to need to do though when you're running all these balances is I would highly recommend using a B-Light controller. This B-Light controller is actually going to run all these balances, dimming them up, dimming them down, adjusting them, letting you know if there's any issues. So this little guy is actually the brain for all these guys. And this guy right here is the switch for these so you're able to double up your capacity. One thing I always want to talk about is safety, guys. I love these goggles from grow one i have been using actually my same pair for almost six years they are incredibly reliable they are durable and i just do not like going into a grow room now without using some type of shades because of the intensity of these lights so make sure to check out the goggles at perfectgardens.com made by grow one last You may need the room so that you can have a successful grow. Thank you so much. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a great grow, everyone. Make sure to check out all your controller needs here at perfectgardens.com. Just go to Grow Essentials, click Controllers, and check out what we got. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.